I am almost a year late to the party, but I've been meaning to check out Heroes and Villains because there are whispers, I mean it's kind of confirmed at this point, but of Jid and Metro Booming. I've already checked out Jid. I love him. So let's check out Metro. I've heard a little bit of his production work in collabs till further notice with James Blake, Travis Scott, and 21 Savage, and I think he also already produced for Jid on the Spider-Verse track, am I wrong? Metro Boomin, Heroes and Villains, 2022. Let's begin. Listen, listen. Every story needs a superhero and a villain. Now, Ooh. introducing Metro motherfucking boom, nigga. <laughs> I wanted to apologize in advance because I didn't realize this was the second album of a planned trilogy. I haven't yet listened to Not All Heroes Wear Capes. Oh my god. Things feel so light in the first half of the track, if only to contrast the darkness to come. You know what they say, if young Metro don't trust you, motherfucker, you better run. Very ominous. All the villains is grinning. The suspense is killing me. These dynamic sections under an angry, fed up villain in the making. This is motive. You people should be thanking Christ that I am who and what I am because you need me. You need me to save you. Oh my God. You do. <laughs> no way. I have chills. Yeah. No. Two. Two. It's like a movie. Literally with like the rain pouring. Yeah, yeah. Drinking dope turned me to a superhero. Yeah. It's interesting that the first half of the track is called Superhero, but Future doesn't present himself as a selfless hailed hero. He was given that title. It wasn't earned by saving the day or putting others above himself. Futures verses fit perfectly under the cool, carefree, badass instrumental. So well done. Part one is superhero, part two is villain. I ain't got a case, so I can't mm -hmm. save you now. Niggas wanna hate you, yeah. rather see you drown. Yeah. In the world Ooh. keeps spinning, like I'm the only one. So who's really the villain? People have expectations of what makes a good person in the same way they expect a superhero to wear a cape. But those expectations can weigh on even the best of people. I can't lie, this is my favorite track off the album. The atmosphere is so cool and confident that it has an attitude of its own, and Don Tolliver's textured voice definitely adds to the energy. I really like Don Tolliver's voice, so interesting. But that confidence wanes in the pre-chorus when he starts second-guessing himself. The repetition works too well here. I felt for him immediately, like I wanted to help him find what he truly wants from life. I think this one's my favorite of the three so far. Both Don Tolliver and Future seem to feel a bit lost. They're successful, but they still feel like they need to reach for something deeper. Oh my god. <laughs> I love that. I love that face so much. Money coming too fast, I can't slow down. I can't slow Feel like I'm running from my past, I can't slow down. So many nights by the crash, now I'm buying a foreigns on cash. I can't slow down. Uh, oh my god. Also, sorry I'm not pausing in between tracks. This one has, uh. Metro! 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 
very deliberate transitions. Drop top and rain. This night feel insane. I'm out dodging rain. Draws oh, Travis Scott. Honestly, despite having just listened to Utopia to death, I could not identify that the feature on here was Travis Scott until I read it on Genius and heard the ad-libs. His delivery is even split in two. I felt like there were two separate features on this track. His versatility continues to amaze me. Later in my initial reaction, I said the only song that kind of lagged for me was Superhero, but I think I meant Raindrops. What does piss purple rain mean? <laughs> I actually really like how um, Travis Scott uses the auto-tune. <laughs> Maybe my expectations were too high since the parentheses title is insane, but nothing sounds too crazy here. The overall mood I'm getting from this one is pretty true neutral. Okay, I'm so curious. It just says it's a... Okay. <laughs> There isn't much room for interpretation on this track. 21 Savage and Young Nudie are not shy about sharing their crimes, whether threatened, planned, or committed. True villains. What an entrance. <laughs> for 21 <Okay>. Savage. <laughs> okay. 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 I put out a beef on a meat rash grater. Holes in his face, put a sheet back. back. His mama threw a counter like ski that. Stuck the op pad so I can cheat that. Why is this one of his albums? I don't, I don't, I don't yeah. get it. Clutching glizzies with the fellas. Yeah. Despite his blatantly evil lines, for some reason, I don't know if it's his word choice, delivery, demeanor, or all of the above, but he's funny. I think he's so funny. Excellent delivery. Yeah. Clutching glizzies with the fellas. Yeah. <laughs> I really appreciate that Metro gave Young Nudie such a strong beat to prove himself on. It's an intimidating introduction for sure, and I'm excited to see where he goes next. I'm a stepper. Tweet is hot, jalapeno pepper. I, I really like that one actually. First, I think it's so funny that Metro told Drake the song was finished, but Drake still wanted to try writing a verse for it, and Metro declined. Again, what a power move. He stays true to his vision despite how many more plays a Drake feature could bring in, and I absolutely admire that. A lot of the production work on here is really orchestral, I love it. Honestly, in retrospect, I wonder why Metro didn't give Young Thug more of a build-up to his entrance in this story. Whoa. It's like almost a Jersey beat with the, with the sub. There's really no indication that Thug is a major player who, spoiler, we'll hear more from later. Where are we going? <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, I'll pause there because, oh, we just went through six songs in a row without any pausing. Okay, let's do some reflection because I didn't really say much. It does give me the same feeling as Utopia gave me, which is dark, sinister. I really love that sound. It's just so cinematic, really powerful, right? The side that we don't really get to see in like mainstream movies and we're always rooting for the good guys, but this is showing you like the evil villain story. That's the, the feeling that I'm getting. A lot of features from people that we have seen before, Future, Travis Scott, 
21 Savage, Young Thug. This was my first time hearing Don Tolliver, I think, and I love his voice. This next track that we're about to listen to also has Don Tolliver on it, so I'm just, I'm really excited for that. And I remember making a comment in my Utopia reaction that Young Thug's delivery was a little off kilter, and now I can tell that that was definitely on purpose because on here it's very synced very, you know, expected. So that's very interesting. I'm curious to know what the the recent Young Thug album sounds like now, because now I've seen him in kind of both lights, right? I can definitely see why this album got so much hype. I don't think any of these tracks really lagged, I would say, except maybe Superhero. After a while, the, the flow and the production kind of sounded too samey without much drastic change. But aside from that, all of the other tracks have been paced very well. So I'm really enjoying this so far. What a fun listen. Like I know you When we last saw Don Tolliver in this story, he was conflicted about his actual wants in life. Now it sounds like he wants love, but he generally doesn't allow himself to be so vulnerable. Not everyone deserves that vulnerability. I could live in this moment forever. We get transported into his hazy mental space. Things feel intense, moving in slow motion. This part is so dramatic, I love it. He's changing, and Morgan Freeman returns to narrate a foreshadowing of Don, can I call you Don's, struggle to become either the hero or the villain. Heroes are <laughs> Morgan Freeman. <laughs> emerging only when needed. They ascend the winding path of their own fate, barely knowing the ledge, despite coping with living a whole life as two halves. Oh my god. This tense cemetery sample underneath Young Thug's own villainous monologue is the reprise we needed for this character. It's even more impactful since his introduction to the album was overall lackluster, the villain and plot twist you wouldn't expect. On a lay I gotta get smarter. I don't trust women, so I thank God that I had some daughters. I'm the youngest, but yet. Yeah, I was living my life on a yacht. I ain't taking my chain off that. Like the way that you suck in my cock. Got some acting, let's go get a pop. Although risky, Young Thug seems to thrive on his dangerous lifestyle while still managing to take care of those he loves. We can only see in hindsight just how serious these lyrics are. Young Thug is really growing on me. The fucking bell, I love that. The song slows down, the ominous bells emphasizing Young Thug's leave. Metro Spider into I Can't Save You is probably my favorite moment of the album. It's definitely the strongest for Patea. Metro Boomin wants some more, nigga. That transition was crazy. The cynicism is obvious here. Villains are already secure in their roles, while heroes face continuous tests of morality and, eventually, they'll lose. I can't save you, I can't save you, I can't save you, I can't, I can't save you, I can't, oh. I can't save no ho. I can't save you, I can't save you, I can't save these hoes. I can't save you, I can't Why save do I feel like crying? Shout out saving hoes, talk that boy put his tape on. Shout out saving hoes, talk that boy I can't save these hoes. Most superheroes don't wear cape. All villains wear grin. Oh, that was so good. Just can't believe this, man. Metro Boomer wants some more, nigga. Somebody said they the saw you. <laughs> the person you were kissing. I can't tell if I like this song or not. My initial gut feeling says it's interesting, but not interesting enough to keep me coming back. It feels a tad dated, like early 2000s mainstream R&B, especially the textual overlapping vocal bridge. Oh. The piano. Gorgeous. 
and I was cuffing like the precinct. How you go from housewife to a sneaky link? Got you running around in all type of bands and roads. Girl you used to ride in the ring. Both The Weeknd and 21 Savage come off more like victims than heroes or villains in this track. It's unfair to be cheated on. What hero will step in to defend them? Or what story will come from this injustice? Hero or villain? I have expected it to slow down here. Like this. <laughs> if you creeping, just don't let me find out. Oh Get a hotel, never bring them to the house. Oh the whole premise of the song really reminds me of something off of the original trilogy. Like, I'm pretty sure he's talked about this before. And it also reminds me of this journaling prompt that I got. I think it was yesterday that was like, if your partner cheated once, regretted it, and never did it again, would you want to know? <laughs> Let me know if you would want to know in the comments below. <laughs> Roger, bitch is one for she's not for leave. That's the type Ooh. that put me in my mood. She know that I'm up and she can cool for me. She know how to put me in my groove. I love this instrumental so much. This is also my favorite Travis Scott feature on the album. It just feels more high energy. The strings, synth, and keys all offer a playful contrast to the deep bass. Something new is always happening. Got a crush on this waitress, ho, she served me. Not me. Porsche headlights on, Kermit the Frog. Michael Vick, number seven, I'm a dog. Ratchet bitches wanting to fit around to me. I'ma need an extra for the two. They might have to go and build a house for me. I'ma need an extra footer. I'm not sure what the extra foot or two means in this track, but it's significant enough to be in the title. The visual imagery of Niagara Falls and Tears is beautiful, but I don't understand its place either. If you know, let me know. That's the type that put me in my mood. She know that I'm up and she can cool for me. She know how to put me in my groove. I know it's a lot that you can learn from me. It's just one thing that you gotta prove. If you gotta walk with just to ride for me. I might need an extra for the two. Villains don't perceive themselves as wrong. And all heroes do not wear capes. Villains are made, not born. Most times, the villain and the hero's beginnings, unlike their endings, take nearly identical shape and form. Who represent the structure, nigga? Oh Death, mayhem, murder, and mad, nigga. You try me, you're gonna die. You try to score, you're gonna die. 21 doubles down on his heinous tendencies that we heard in Umbrella. It's another villainous monologue of purely evil ideals. I'm an inside nigga with a bang roll. Used to call his country down on this build up is smoke. crazy. I'm with the shit, but count money more fun though. All the ops say they hard while they run for. All these choppers, I can open up a gun store. Really street, I ain't going for the guts though. Interesting. Get your cash money, I can't get no fuck though. Bud shots hit his stomach, night guts home. Put your man down, then I make a sound. Brand new diamond bat in it, hold a honey. Whoa, this track is so long. The instrumental is discordant, all threat and no resolve. It feels like he's walking us down a dark alleyway, and every nerve in my body is screaming at me that something bad is about to happen. Caught him back like I Who's won't hate. Thought I came to shop, but it was our take. Beef about a bitch, you a tender dick rookie. I can't even catch I actually it, really like this piano riff. Used to sell the gas, now I'm selling our cookie. Why that nigga down? Where are you taking us? Okay, I wasn't expecting that. Oh my god. But instead of meeting the end, we get a second chance at life, a light at the end of the tunnel. Mustafa is the sympathetic hero of the story. He understands that it's difficult for those around him to escape the cycle of evil perpetuated by their environment, but he still makes an effort to advocate for the right thing.
Mustafa is the hero of this story. It's such a strong turning point. I felt like dropping to my knees and repenting for every sin I've ever committed, rethinking every choice I've ever made. Literally, just the voice of reason here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful guitars. How do you even come back from that intense perspective shift? I do feel like Lock On Me is a break from the intensity of the last track and also to further feel the intensity, the fire of the next track. It's a song to get your mind off things, in the same way Travis and Future talk about lean women and money getting their own minds off things. What things? Not sure. Maybe evil things, villain things. I really like this line. That high energy soul sample is amazing, and the rhythm play throughout the track is infectious. It just makes me feel good. And ASAP Rocky comes back, this time not as a narrator, but as his own character, further questioning the selfish motives of the villains. And this is the first we've heard from Take Off, a fun little impressive alphabet run. In my light browsing, I saw that he passed away just a month or so prior to the release of this album, so it's a shame that he didn't get to hear the completed project. It's a standout verse. <laughs> it's as if the story doesn't have a definitive ending and there's more to be said later. Maybe in another four years with the third part to the trilogy. I'm excited for what's to come and to also look back on the first album. Only got two feet, but we need new shoes. Interesting fade away. <laughs> it started so early too. <laughs> oh, this is a bonus track. This time around we won't know the man. This time around we won't know the man. Yeah. It's the young one of real bus got his smoker. This ain't no Obama. When I scrolled down on the Genius page to return to the album, it threw me into drip season forever, so I wonder if it was purely a bonus release to cross-promote Gunna's album. Obviously, I don't know what that album is about, but this track definitely ties into the heroes and villains themes of morality and values, in this case, greed. Anyway, overall, it's a good listen, so I'm glad it was included, even if as a bonus track. I'm surprised this is a bonus track and that it wasn't just included in the original track listing because I feel like this would have done really well in the first half of the album. It is very villain-esque, especially that line, I think it was 21 Savage that said, something like money and evil is connected or something, I don't remember. But yeah, very fun listen. The production on this is so good, all of the features are incredible. It really, really put me on to Don Tolliver and Young Thug. I'm really curious to listen to more of their stuff. Some of these tracks though, I'm surprised have more plays, like way more plays than others. I'm so, so, well, I guess because it's the weekend, it's bound to have more plays, but this like blows everything out of the, out of the water. It's at like 966 million plays on Spotify. And then the next top track is Superhero with Future and Chris Brown. Not sure how I feel about the Chris Brown feature. He does have a very nice voice, so I can understand why people want to still work with him, but just like, I don't know. I personally have a very bad taste in my mouth from him from when I was young and hearing about 
the stuff with Rihanna. Literal domestic abuse. That's literally the only association that I have with this guy. But Metro himself, definitely proven to be a top tier producer in my eyes. This album is so fun. And you already know how I feel about the like dark grungy undertones, the evil villain-esque side of the story. I loved the Morgan Freeman sections. I think there were two of them, maybe three, I don't remember. But it did kind of tie it together very cinematic. One of the first tracks where they're just, it sounded like, you know, a face off in the rain in a dark alleyway. Like, I don't know. It does paint a really nice picture. And I think everyone did an excellent job. So thanks for listening with me. I know I'm super late on this just because I'm the internet's slowest music enjoyer, but it does make me very excited for the collaboration with Jid. Anyway, that's all I have to say off the top of my head. I will come back with more. I know what's coming next. You know what's coming next. So until then, stay tuned, stay safe, and be kind.